Prove that the tensions on the frictionless pulley can be thought of as acting at the center of the pulley. This is essentially the same as showing that the two systems, one in the rigid body and one as a part of it, would be equivalent systems. So let's look at the free body diagram of the rigid body. The tension comes off tangent to the curve, so this is theta 1, in both directions. This is T2, T as well, theta 2, and the pin in the middle will give me OX and OY. This is my original rigid body system. My particle, where I've moved my tensions into the center of the circle, so I have two tensions that come off at angles theta 1 and theta 2, whatever those are. I also have still OY and OX. That's what my particle equilibrium free body diagram would look like. So now I want to show that this original and this particle are equivalent. Let's look at the sum of the forces in X where I've taken positive T to be to the right. Over here I will have T cosine theta 1 plus OX plus same T, T cosine theta 2. On my particle, I have minus T cosine theta 1 plus OX plus T cosine theta 2, which is the same. Now I want to take the sum of the forces in the y direction where positive is up. I get minus T sine theta 1 plus OY minus T sine theta 2. For my particle, I get the same thing. Because, of course, the distances that this, that in the original, my T's are moved out from the center, don't really occur. On the other hand, for the moments, I have no moment for my particle because my forces are all concurrent. So if I take the moment at O, which is what I'm going to do in a minute, the sum of the moments at O is zero because every force I've got goes through it. Now I need to show that the sum of the moments over here is also zero, even in my original case. If I can show that the sum of the forces is the same and the sum of the moments is the same, then everything is an equivalent system. The cords come off the pulley tangent to the circle. So each and every T is perpendicular to the radius, which connects O, the center of the circle, out to the point of application of each individual T. So if I take the sum of the moments, I can do that with the scalar method. And looking at the one, for example, on the left here, I just get T times R. And this will tend to spin me counterclockwise. If I look at the other T, I have T times R, except that I'm now going clockwise. So I'm going to have one minus the other. Both OX and OY go through the point O, so that's all I have. And I have just shown that both of the sum of the moments is zero. Therefore, I can say that the systems are equivalent, and it is good enough to consider a pulley, even with a finite radius, as a particle.